Hi, happy Friday, fancy friends. It's Amy from Savor, Salvage, and Scent. And today I thought I would bring to you a quickie, um, or in other words, a Friday fetish video. And today I would focus on um, my favorite uh, bottle designs in my collection. So let's set some ground rules first. These are the bottles that are the favorites from my collection. There are a gazillion bottles of perfume in the world, so by no means do I mean these are the greatest bottles of all time. Though they may be to me, they might not be to you. Two, beauty is subjective. It's good, it's a good thing. Um, because I love it, you might loathe it, and vice versa. It's okay. Um, and in fact, I mm, encourage you to upload pictures or tell me about your favorite bottles if you think they're not represented here. I would love that. Um, lastly, um, I'm not gonna say a lot about the juice this time. I thought it would be fun occasionally to do a faster video and um, focus a little more on the basics. And um, so I'm just gonna do a quick run through of the bottles, but if there's something that you wanna know more about with any of these scents, please let me know. Um, and just to give you an idea, I, I think I chose about either 16 bottles or families of bottles from certain houses. So let's go. All right, number one. I thought I would kind of go in order of around when they were made or when I started wearing them. So some of the oldest that I think are just stunningly beautiful and classics are the uh, Lanvin bottles. Um, I think they're really cool. They kind of look like flasks, um, just beautiful glass design. And then the lids for each were the um, mother and child, who I believe is uh, Jean Lanvin, the designer, and her daughter. So. Just beautiful, classic, gorgeous bottle. Um, and same with, I think, kind of similar, um, around the same age, uh, not this particular Chanel, but Chanel bottles. Um, again, just a really classic, beautiful glass bottle. And I think what's so cool about these is, you know, they're just super iconic. Um, so you're gonna see me moving around a little bit in this video because I have lots to show you. So I'm gonna move, be moving them back and forth. So, okay, next would be, um, I'm gonna kind of put a group of um, Guerlain bottles up here. So these are some of my favorite uh, Guerlain designs uh, from my collection. And again, this is no way representative of all the Guerlain designs because, oh my gosh, there's just so, 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 so many that I don't have, especially the really costly ones, frankly. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about these. Um, well, first, of course, is the classic Shalimar bottle, which is, I think, oh my gosh, so beautiful. It's supposed to look like an urn. Um, if you'd like to know more about the history of this bottle, I'm certainly glad to talk about it another time. Um, you could talk for hours about this bottle and the history behind the perfume. It's really, really cool, but it's supposed to look like an urn. And I think it's just, again, a timeless, iconic bottle. People tend to know this the minute they see it really beautiful. So that's one of their older ones. Um, I would say kind of probably next in line. So the, um, I've talked a little bit about these before, but they're the canisters that were often used for some of the classic bottles. And I think these are still used, mm, if not today, pretty recently. This happens to be a bottle of Blair Blue, um, but I think just like the sexiest little flask you've ever seen. Um, let's see. Um, this is a beautiful bottle that my my dear friend Sarah gifted me, and it is for uh, Shamad, which is one of my favorite Guerlain perfumes, real powdery, just gorgeous, gorgeous perfume. And this is what the original bottle looked like, which was supposed to be, I believe, like a beating heart with an arrow. Um, and I don't know if you can see on the stopper, it actually says Shamad on it, but just, I think, <laughs> so gorgeous. Um, and then more recently, they've become known for their bee bottle designs. Um, this is, oh gosh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Jardins de Bagatelle. Ooh. 
it's a French garden I've been to and it's beautiful, but I don't know if you can see there's little bees engraved in the bottle and the cap. Um, and then the all the um, Aqua Allegoria line um, has bottles either like this or kind of similar. Um, sometimes it has like a gold um, top, but with this shape. So really, really beautiful bottles from Guerlain. <laughs> So that I consider number two, that little grouping. So the first was the classic um, Lanvin and Chanel. Second was this group of Guerlain bottles. Third is um, some bottles from Grey, so Cabochard. Um, I'm gonna show you an original bottle of Cabochard that I got from a, um, an amazing estate sale where I live in Cleveland. Um, I went to a, a person's house who had owned a perfume store like in the 60s and 70s and got this beautiful original bottle, which I think is so beautiful with the velvet ribbon and the G on the stopper for gray. Um, this is also Cabochard. I think this is the perfume and this is a, a toilette, I believe. Um, and then, excuse me, <laughs> and then Cabotine, which is kind of like, if this is the the mommy or daddy kind of cabochard or scent by Grey. This is the, the younger, um, more flirtatious version, I would say. Uh, both really green fragrances and, and wonderful, and I think like a couple of my favorite cheapies, but I just love, 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 love this top. So that was some, um, some Grey bottles. Really, really cool. Um, next on my list, um, are bottles that kind of sent me into perfume collecting. Um, my mom's signature scent was Halston, and I, a lot of people hate this bottle, like gets a lot of hate. I think it's a modernist masterpiece. It's, I mean, when you consider the time this was made, which I think is, oh, I hope I'm right, like late 60s? I hope, hope. Um, really, really bizarre modernist, awesome design with this like, uh, off-white kind of loose sight and this cool bottle shape and then some more modern uh, flankers interpretations this is a more modern version and it's their amber version and I love it love it love it just as much it's so gorgeous uh, one of the frankly one of the best cheap buys ever it's around ten dollars get your hands on it it's gorgeous um, it's totally I mean I don't believe that fragrance is uh, gendered uh, but this is great, great unisex scent, in my opinion. Um, so, love those. Okay, bear with me um, as I grab a few more. Um, so, opium. <laughs> this, oh my gosh. I mean, I am really, 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 really into chinoiserie and um, Asian-inspired design, and I think this bottle, this is called um, Opium Secret de Parfum. Um, it's, I would say a little, gosh, a little richer than opium, if you can imagine. It's great. Um, but look at this bottle. It looks like carved bamboo. It's amazing. It says YSL on the cap. I just think that is a stunner. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's a piece of art for sure. Um, and gosh, I, I wanted this for a very, very long time, and I finally got my hands on it for a decent price this year, so I was really, really excited. You probably remember um, opium bottles from this time, like the 80s, they're amazing. Some of them looked like, they did look like like carved flasks. Some of them actually were neck pieces that you could put perfume in. Some of them were, um, they looked like little purses. Uh, they were just amazing. So, vintage opium. <clears throat> Okay, um, I became obsessed with the whole Lolita Lempica line when I was in my late teens. Um, one of the first ways I really got into perfume. A lot of you know the original bottle that looked like an apple and it had ivy leaves all over it. Um, this is a, a midnight version. I just think it's so cool. Again, I know a lot of people that dislike this bottle but I think it's the coolest. It's just so gothic with these knit little leather leaves and the atomizer. Oh heck, I'll spray some on, why not? Um, comes out of the apple stem. Mm. 
Um, this is a naughty fragrance. I'm, I'm just gonna say that. And I think the bottle represents it. So yeah, just like this little, little punk rock, gothic beauty. And then some other flankers from the Lolita Lempica line. Um, this actually says uh, Lolita on the cap and the ivy leaf. And then it says Lolita Lempica all over the bottle. I just think that is so cool. This is These are also cheapies. These ranged in price. I, I think they're a little harder to get now. Some of them might be out of production, but I think I originally paid anywhere from between 20 and 40 for these and they're just, they're both really, really gorgeous. So let me know if you want to know more about those. <clears throat> oh gosh, this was one of my first loves as well. Um, this is Blonde by Versace. And if you can see, it looks, I'm not sure if this is a little leak bottle. If it isn't, it sure looks like one. But their I iconic, like Medusa looking head is carved into the bottle. And even the stopper is really, really, really gorgeous, like faceted. This is a beautiful perfume if you like um, white florals. Um, this is tuberose, like, and it's gorgeous. You can see even to, like by the color of the juice, really rich, beautiful. Um, if if that's your thing, it's gorgeous. It, I love it. So anyways, this also is out of production and I um, had my eye on it for a really long time and finally found an affordable bottle this year. Um, this is only, I think, half an ounce, but this is going to last forever because it's really <laughs> strong. So I love it. Okay. Um, next, another perfume that gets a lot of hate, but I think is awesome is Vicky Teal's Sirene. And I love this bottle. To me, again, if it's, I'm not sure if it's Lalique. If it's not, it sure could go neck to neck with a Lalique bottle. That is, you can see all these beautiful sirens on the bottle and the shell top. Um, this is like a total beast 80s floral. Uh, Vicky Teal was the designer of the mini skirt. Um, she has a really interesting history and I think she has great perfumes and some of her perfumes designed for men are some of my favorites too. They're awesome. Also in these really cool carved um, frosted bottles and also total cheapies. Like this is one of my few perfumes that I have. I think I have two backups for this because it's so good and I don't ever want it to run out. Um, but it's dirt cheap. I got this at um, a discount store for like $10. Yeah. So Great, and again, gorgeous, gorgeous bottle, Vicky Teal. <clears throat> okay, next, again, a lot of people hate this bottle. Why? It's so colorful and cool and sculptural and beautiful. Lulu, come on, look at that. Totally unique in its color. Look at those colors, look at the shape. So cool. Again, another beast of a beauty of a fragrance in here, florals. Um, and just, again, I think it's such a cool modernist design and um, nothing else like it. Yeah, that matters. Really cool, great colors. Um, this next bottle, if I had to choose my top favorite of all my bottles, it might be my number one. Uh, Nikki Saint LaFall. Um, look at this. So this is, she's an, a really interesting artist, first of all. Um, I think she passed about like 15, 20 years ago, but a really, really important uh, f uh, female sculptor. And I say female because it is rare, um, or at least was rare at her time. And her designs were just really vibrant. And um, I'll be honest, I didn't know anything about this perfume. I bought this bottle probably when I was like 20 and I, I just hardly knew a thing and I, you know, you couldn't test this. This of course was like many of my perfumes a blind buy. And I bought this, it was I think marked down to $10 on FragranceNet. And this is the greenest, most foresty perfume you will ever smell. If you're into like forest, like this actually is, is a really high oil content and I use it um, as a bubble bath. And if you wanna smell like herbal, this is a banger. It's awesome. Um, and you can see those two snakes 
So cool. Look at the color of the bottle. It's incredible. And then on the back, you can see her name. I think that is just so cool. Totally gorgeous. Like, to me, that is, if I could have a design sense, look at that. Love it. So that would probably be my favorite of all my bottles if I had to choose. Um, talked a little bit about this in one of my past videos. Fendi's Asia. How cool. Again, like a chinoiserie masterpiece. Look at the cap. This is the name. So cool. And the design again. Just totally beautiful. I'll put that little baby up here. Um, <clears throat> next are two bottles that I think are just, uh, you know, again, just totally gorgeous. One, not to be a surprise, made by Lalique. Le Parfum. Um, I think, first of all, the, the weight of the bottle, no surprise, Lalique makes glass, so, you know, this is, they're gonna kill it here, right? Um, but look at the weight of this bottle, even the, the um, font that they use, then the cap, I don't know if you can see the cap, um, has like a head on it, and then this gorgeous red tassel silk tassel so beautiful and kind of in along a similar line is this bottle by isabel toledo uh may she rest in peace um and this is called moonflower and um this this was from a line of perfumes that did not get a lot of love because it was made for lane bryant and um I am, I happen to be right in the range of um, larger sizes and right at the beginning of plus sizes. And so I sometimes shop at Lane Bryant and was so lucky to find that these perfumes were so great. I, and of course, you know, other, other stores didn't pick them up, obviously. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. This is a really, or sorry, this is called Moon Orchid. I, I forget if I said that. Um, but these did not get a lot of love and then they went out of production fast and now they're highly collectible and insanely expensive um but this is a you know a gorgeous i think the bottle with her name isabel and again this gorgeous silk tassel and multifaceted just so 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 beautiful um and you can see that i really love like um asian designs and then I've been really lately getting into more um, Arabic perfumes and these I would say are not Arabic but are Arabic inspired perfumes. They're um, Aramis Calligraphy, Calligraphy Rose. I just think again like that script is so beautiful, the wooden top to kind of hint at the oudish fragrance inside and then um, Calligraphy Saffron. These are both like unbelievable scents unbelievable and you can see like the color of the juice in this oh so gorgeous and this very much like saffron um both just killer fragrances so 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 beautiful and to me are worth 10 times what they cost just beautiful so really cool minimalist but highly i would say styled uh bottles and then a last uh bottle that i would say is super super modern and i'm almost like surprised i love it but i do love it um, I have a friend who I work with who I would not say is like deeply into fragrance, but definitely knows how to pick a signature scent and she wears like one every year or two and she smells so good. I mean, truly I would like follow her around. I'm always like, what are you wearing? You smell so good. And you know, she wore Dior Attic for years and like, it just smelled so good on her. Oh my gosh. And then recently at work, I was like, okay, what's up? What are you wearing? It smells so great. And she was wearing Prada Candy Night. And, um, I'm going to try like <laughs> not to wear it around her because I hate, you know, when somebody kind of steals your signature scent, but you better believe I'm wearing this at home. It is, um, like a dark chocolate caramely scent, but to me, it almost gets it's not an immature uh, chocolate scent. When it dries down, it smells almost like smoky powder. It's beautiful, gorgeous, and delicious. Like, I, I, again, I wanna chase after somebody who has it on, but I just think this is such a cool, modern bottle. I love the ombre effect of the bottle, how it goes from dark, like almost midnight blue or purple to pink. And then I think it's so cool that the atomizer is this top part. And so, I don't know if you can see, Holy Hannah, that smells good. Um, 
and then the name engraved there and what is supposed to look like a leather band. So I think just really, really cool. So that's just a few of my favorite bottle designs. Um, I hope this was a fun uplift for Friday. Again, I would love to know what are some of your favorites. And if you have any questions about any of these scents, holler at me and let me know and I'll tell you more. Okay, hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Talk soon, bye.